From Bitcoin mining to AI powerhouses, there's a massive shift happening in the industry with a lot of opportunities and there's also a lot of challenges to navigate. Speaking to me now, Structure Research's Infrastructure 2024 Summit in Las Vegas is Wes Cummins, CEO and Chairman of Applied Digital. And Wes, welcome to Vegas. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No worries. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the town. Um, always enjoy Vegas. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you're winning at this lot. I haven't tried yet. Okay, we'll good. <laughs> let's, let's hope. Um, I mean, one thing that you're winning at, it's on what you're doing in the market. You're bringing up massive scale facilities. You're planning for the very future, for the future ahead of us, of uh, an AI economy, of a Bitcoin economy. Uh, it's massive quantity. But before we get into the, the demands, the trends, the challenges, uh, on your website, you describe yourself as being the designed from inception to accommodate unique needs of AI factory deployments. What do you mean by AI factories? Because this seems to be becoming the new synonym for data centers. Yeah. So this, this uh, vernacular was first said by Jensen from NVIDIA, the founder of NVIDIA, CEO of NVIDIA. He started to talk about AI factories where you have buildings that are purpose-built specifically to deploy GPUs at large scale at very high density that really you know, is the hardware that makes AI happen. And so what we're doing is going to locations that we think are ideal for this, that have the large uh, quantities of power that are necessary to really build these kind of facilities, create these kind of power densities. We prefer it be in a cold location so that you mm. have easier cooling, lower PUEs. So, so uh, PUE means just the efficiency of the facility. Mm. Um, but we're building these facilities uh, that are specifically designed to, to build out these you know, supercomputing uh, clusters. Mm -hmm. And they're really built in blocks. This is what an, an NVIDIA mm. has enabled with their systems, not just the GPUs, but the networking systems. They've allowed people to build, companies like us to really build supercomputing building blocks, you know, piece mm -hmm. by piece. And the more you can put in the same location, the more powerful they are. And so this is the, the, the location, it's the building, it's the cooling mechanism, it's the power density. Mm -hmm. All of it is designed around this type of compute workload mm -hmm. um, so that you can be the most efficient, you know, that you could possibly be the highest power, you know, from a compute perspective that mm -hmm. we could possibly be. Uh, we started doing this back in 2022 and then really accelerated in 23 uh, to where we are now building these large scale mm -hmm. facilities. Okay, and before we get into what you're doing at Applied, uh, how have you seen the shift within the finance and investment of this new powerhouse, of these new AI factories? How has the conversation changed in, in the Wall Street? How has it changed in the, with the banks? How has it changed with the finance people? So it's, it's been a massive change over the past 12 months. You know, it's, it went from people and banks, equity providers, all the financing sources kind of figuring out mm -hmm. what's going on, what is this new type of compute, what is, what is it producing, what are the locations, what are the different uh, parameters around it as far as you know, latency, these types of aspects. So it's went from learning to th just every single day I have a new capital source calling me, someone mm -hmm. else who wants into this market. Uh, it's the traditional financers, right? It's the traditional uh, data center banks that, that do pr uh, project finance. It's the traditional equity players that are mostly private equity, um, insurance companies, pension funds, the guys who play big in data center already. But what I'm seeing, especially over the last four months, is just a, an entire new group of investors that have figured out this is where there's a substantial amount of growth for mm. the, the foreseeable future. And everyone wants to, to chase really large mm. growing markets, especially when the majority of the offtake is extremely highly credit rated mm. entities. So you're really dealing with hyperscalers. So it, it makes everyone want to participate in this mm. market. Yeah, everyone uh, wants a piece of this, this yeah. sector. Absolutely. Uh, and we, we've seen that here with some people coming from the energy industry. They've sold their company. Some, I met some last night. They sold their company last year. And now they are type, uh, diving into data centers. Absolutely. Uh, on the back of all the AI demands. You, you're, you're seeing people who are in energy, people who are doing other type of, of uh, mm. You know, real estate development, whether they were doing hospitality, whether they mm. were an office, whether they were doing uh, housing. Now everyone wants to be in data center mm. uh, from many different angles. Mm. Absolutely. So, and then of course, Applied, you've got about 480 megawatts uh, of current operational capacity. Correct. You've got about 400 being built. Correct. Uh, but you've got a pipeline of 2,000 megawatts, 2 gigawatts. Correct. So you've recently secured a $160 million uh, financing framework with uh, institutional investors, accredited investors, and plus NVIDIA uh, and some other more. How are you planning to finance all this beyond that? Because 160 is not enough, 160 million is not enough. It's, it's, it's not, not near so, enough. <laughs> so w I, I've talked about this a lot uh, publicly, which is 
we're in a capital intensive business. This is an asset based business. Uh, we are in the process and we're very close to the end of this process of moving from, you know, company level finance down to asset level finance. Mm. And that's really how this industry works. And so when you look at, you know, our, our campus in, in North Dakota, in Ellendale, North Dakota, uh, that total campus, 400 megawatts critical IT load, right? It's 600 megawatts utility power will, you know, cost $4 billion to build somewhere mm. they call a round number, $4 billion. What we need there and what we will get there is um, project level finance at the asset level from mm. uh, you know traditional construction lending bank debt uh, that will be you know roughly eighty to ninety percent mm. of the cost uh, and then you have either our equity participation or another equity partner come in uh, into that facility maybe some mes debt that comes in but but really what we've done and what we did with that one hundred sixty million mm. that was that was at the public company level and we need to push this down to the asset level financing and there is ample amounts of money mm. that are ready to to be or to finance these types of assets mm. the, the really the key piece for us you know we've been talking about we've been under <coughs> LOI with a, a hyperscaler um, and we're you know working on finalizing that lease mm. and you know expect to finalize that that lease in the near future uh, but once we finalize that lease it unlocks all this yeah. asset you have financing a blueprint for us. Yeah. yeah and then once once we do one we'll do two three mm. four uh, and as you mentioned, we have a very large pipeline. Uh, we have the 400 megawatts that we're building. We have 1.4 gigawatts of uh, uh, across three separate campuses okay. in, in addition to the Ellendale campus that we're marketing for 2026 power. So we're, we're pushing really aggressively mm -hmm. in this market. Mm -hmm. Okay, what sort of challenges would you expect in the midst of all this? I mean, I'm, I'm probably talking more about power really. Yeah. Uh, are you facing challenges when it comes to power for so, local communities as well? Yeah, so, so Power is the number one issue in the industry. Uh, access to power, access to, it's really important to qualify this, it's access to <coughs> near-term power. The, so 25 data center capacity is done at this <coughs> point. If you didn't start building you know, almost a year ago, you're not gonna have 2025 power. Um, now we're focused on 26 power. And so we're out marketing 2026 power. We happen to have a significant amount of power in what the industry typically calls power bank. We call our pipeline, development pipeline. Mm -hmm. So we, t we have that, we have the locations. The next big challenge is supply chain, right? Mm -hmm. So backup gen, uh, high voltage switch gear, chillers, UPSs, PDUs, all of the electrical gear, the cooling gear that goes into the f these facilities because of the enormous demand you're mm -hmm. seeing, there is long lead times on those items. And so that's that's the other big challenge to building these out is, is the lead time. So you're saying there's still, well, still no, there are supply chain issues now on the back of demand, no longer on the back of COVID. No, it's, it's yeah, on the back just of on demand. The, the, oh, right. the demand has gone up so significantly. Um, you know, in, in some cases, backup gen, for example, mm. can be, you know, 18 to 24 months out. Mm. And so you need to have slots in the supply chain. Uh, we've okay. done a good job securing a lot of those, you know, manufacturing mm. slots for the various uh, components that, that I, I mentioned previously that are, that are really difficult to procure. Mm. Oh, so the demand is really outstripping supply. <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. The, the thing that will be the gating factor on this mm. though, if we were building just to mm. demand, the, it would outstrip supply wildly, mm. but you have the power is the gating factor, right? So power is limiting the amount of data centers mm. that can be built. Uh, and so there, there is kind of a, what do we call a governor or a throttle on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it, it's going to be right, at least over the next few years, it's going to be hard to overbuild mm. uh, because of the limited power availability. Mm. Okay. How long do you think that the timeline is going to last 10 years? Years so what I, no what, I <laughs> what I talk about uh, again, we're a publicly traded company, so I, mm. I try to stick to what I've talked about mm. publicly. Um, you know, I, I I typically say we have pretty good visibility out through the end of twenty seven, right? That's okay. that's three years, um, three years yeah. out. Uh, that's really good visibility in in any market. This space. So, do I think it keeps going beyond that? Yes, mm. but I I don't. You know, I, I think that's good enough right now mm. for us mm. to be building out. I think anything that we can build and bring online, we can lease in uh, in in that time frame. Mm. Okay, and then so you pretty much serve the U.S. markets, and uh, yes. there are good places in Europe like the Nordics, for example. Sure. Where do you want to go geographically speaking? What, 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 what are the targets? Sure, so uh, right now we have so much to do in mm. the US. We have that big power pipeline mm. in the US. We, we did spend a little bit of time looking at things specifically mm. in the Nordics. We almost pulled the trigger on a, on a facility uh, in Norway. Um, mm. but Lots of power there. <laughs> but a lot of, of uh, two things that are there, a lot of uh, hydropower mm. and a lot of ambient cooling, free ambient mm. cooling in, in Norway. So. 
but but we just have so much to focus on here in the U.S. So you know, if I if I looked out five years, what I would love to have is the facilities we're building now that are in more unique, you know, remote locations um, that work well for AI. But I would love to add in some metro locations okay. as well to create more of the platform. Yeah. Would they be more like an edge? Kind of. So, so edge is a funny. Yeah, I mean, what, do you, what do you mean by edge? Let's start with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you ask, you know, I think if you ask ten different people, you're gonna you get, get ten, different, 10 answers. different answers on edge. So, edge can be two different things, in in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, edge is metro areas close to the users, right? That's the edge of the network for where a lot of people are. And then there's edge that is more like industrial edge compute, where you're pushing it out to a factory or you're pushing mm -hmm. it out to um, a utility plant or something like that, where you could have much smaller deployments, but edge generally is going to be smaller deployments. But those those two, we actually have a partnership with um, a company that we announced previously called Zadata. Uh, mm -hmm. And so Zadata is a an edge compute company, a very interesting edge compute mm -hmm. company. Um, that, that, that'll be one of the ways that we approach mm -hmm. uh, the, the edge computing aspect mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Wes, I think I know the answer to the next question. Uh, but uh, your results are coming up. We yeah. are about two weeks away from, from knowing your quarter two, I think it's quarter two, it's quarter, quarter three, one. Quarter, quarter one, quarter one. We're, we're on a weird fiscal year. Yeah. We're May ending fiscal year, so this will be our August quarter. Okay. Right? First quarter of the, of the fiscal 25. Okay, quarter one, 2025. Yep. What can you tell us two weeks prior to that? Because uh, you're enjoying, right now you're enjoying a consensus rating of five, so yeah. that's, that's quite good. So, so here's what I can say. I can't say very much at all mm. about that. So I won't talk about the quarter or the results of the quarter. What I, what I can do, do is point to our, our last earnings report, which was at the end of August, because that was the end of our fiscal year, so it kind of stretches out. And what we did say at that earnings report is we thought that quarter, the May quarter, um, was a bottom for our business. We had some, uh, a little bit of a rough patch with some electrical gear in the early part of this calendar year. And so we said that, you know, that was, we expect that to be a bottom for our business. Uh, so that'd give you an indication of kind of what direction, mm -hmm. you know, we expect the August quarter to be versus mm -hmm. the, uh, the May quarter. Okay, we'll be looking up for it. And then final question now. Uh, we are Structure Research 2024. Next year, we'll be back in Vegas for the 25th edition, for the 2025 edition. What's the one thing you expect the market to do to shift, to adopt, to embrace um, in the next 12 so, months? So I think the, the, one of the most interesting things to watch over the next <coughs> 12 months is there's going to be a big deployment of liquid cooling. Right? Mm. With, with, with the new Blackwell platform that's coming out, there's been a lot of talk about liquid. We're doing in, in North Dakota one of the largest that I know of. Uh, liquid cooled deployments, um, you know, in, in the world. So this is, it's brand new. We're working through all of this. We're just, I'm just talking from our experience. So we're working through all of the dynamics of this, how it operates, how it's deployed. Uh, but mm. I think when we, when we stand here next September, there's going to be a lot of experiences through, you know, liquid cooling and kind of, which is really the future. It's the mm. future of what we're, mm. what we're doing here. Uh, and, and the way when you go to these types of power densities, right? Anytime you get over really 45 or 50 kW per mm. rack or per cabinet of compute, you really need to go to liquid mm. to, to liquid at that point. So in, in North Dakota, we're going to 120. Mm. So, uh, and you're gonna see a lot of those types of deployments. And so I think that's gonna be the, the probably the most, the biggest different uh, difference between now and next year is we're going to mm. actually have experienced that. You know, people are talking about it. Everyone's excited about it. Uh, everyone's ran out and bought the stock of a lot of the companies that are providing, you know, CDUs and those mm. types of equipment. Um, but there, there's a lot to be done. You know, a lot of wood to chop still yeah. on the on the liquid cool. Yeah, we were starting to also see a lot of the, the startups really starting to come out of the shadows now, get the backing, the investment, and rolling yep. out products. But it comes back to the supply chain Absolutely. delays as well. I think. Absolutely. The, so we're seeing some interesting things in supply chain. Uh, we're seeing some components come available uh, because, specifically because power is being pushed further mm. out. So, you know, cer certain companies thought they would have a certain project and the power would be delivered and now they're being told that that power is two more yeah. years away or three more years away. So you're seeing opportunities in the supply chain, but it's going to remain very mm. tight on the supply chain there. side. Yeah. Well, well, there's a challenge, there's an opportunity, and I can't wait to see what happens in the next yeah. 12 months. It's going to be exciting. Uh, Wes Cummings, CEO and Chairman of uh, Applied Digital. Thank you so much for talking to me. As for your home, thank you for watching and do check our website and social media for the latest news about digital infrastructure, finance and reinvestment from across the world. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.